Okay, so in this talk, we are going to to figure out how to write the partial derivative, which we already have the definition of the ordinary derivative. We are going to try to figure out how to write it as a limit. And basically, the idea will be we know how to write the ordinary derivative as a limit, or we'll review that from single variable calculus, and then we'll apply that to write the partial derivative as a limit. So the function is a function of two variables, x and y. We are trying to calculate the derivative at a point, x not y not, so x equals x not and y equals y not. The general notation is df dx xy at, and this specifies that this is the point of evaluation. And uh, similarly for the y derivative, you have uh, this is the notation df dy xy, xy is x not y not. The only difference here is you have x and y. The definition is as follows. So the definition is that it's the derivative with respect to x of the function which sends x to f of x comma y naught. What this means is you fix the y value at y naught, and then we are just cal calculate the derivative with, uh, with respect to x of the function which sends x to f of x comma y naught, and that derivative we are calculating at x equals x naught. So this this expression here it's a function of of how many variables? One. Sorry. Ah. Uh, one. Two. One. one. No. You said one, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and that variable is just x, and so you can differentiate it using just ordinary single variable differentiation. This is again a function of one variable, and you can differentiate it ordinary derivative at a value of the variable. So now, the, the next step is to figure out how do you actually write this as a limit. So, so let, let's recall how one wrote. So I'll use the letter g for the for a function. So I don't confuse with f. What is the definition of g prime x naught? So the, the derivative is defined as a limit of a what's the thing called? The thing difference quotient. Difference quotient. So it's a limit of the difference quotient. Are we here? Yeah. So as x approaches x naught of the quotient of the difference, the difference of the g values okay that's the derivative of the uh, so that's the derivative g at x. It's a, it's a limit of the difference quotient. The difference quotient as x approaches x naught, difference in function value, we have a difference in, in the, uh, in the input values. So let's try to use that to write down the these definitions. So let's u for x. So what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be the limit as x approaches x naught. What's it going to be? But the, the numerator, so it's a difference quotient, the numerator, what will that be? f of x, y naught, minus f of x naught, y naught. So it's f of x, y naught, minus f of x naught, y naught, divided by? x minus x naught. Okay, so this is a definition as a limit, okay, and uh, notice x naught and y naught are constants, x is approaching x naught, and you're doing this limit. And uh, oops, and now we use a red pen to do the y side. So what will what's that going to be? The limit is y approaches y not mm -hmm. of uh, f x not comma y not oh no comma y minus f of x not y not over y minus y not. So the x coordinate is fixed, you're calculating the difference of the y values, uh, change a bit, and dividing by the difference in y values. So that's good. We now have the definitions of, of derivative as limit. But we can write this slightly differently. You recall, the usual way we, we, we write these limits is you write x as x naught plus h. Or another way of saying that is that h is, is x minus x naught. Okay? So if you, if you use this notation, then g prime of x naught becomes the limit as, now since x, x, x is approaching x naught, h is approaching 0. This is the difference. So it's limit as h approaches 0, g of, what will this be? 
X X naught plus H minus G of X naught. And the denominator will just become H. It's just it's just the difference of the values, now it's H. And so we can we can try to rewrite these, both of these in in this notation. Oops, I'll just get the wrong plan. So this becomes limit h approaches zero f of x naught plus h y naught minus f of x naught y naught over h. Difference in the values is h, and uh, and the other side is going to be something similar. It's the limit as Again, h approaches zero. Okay. But this h is now going to add to the y, y coordinate. So it's going to be x naught. Why not plus h? x naught, y naught, over h. Okay, good. Now I want to say a couple more things just to sort of give the geometric idea of what, what's happening. And we'll be, we should review this in more detail in, in another video. Just want to say it very quickly here. And so the, let's say I'll just go here. Imagine, so this plane represents, uh, the possible xy values. And, and maybe, maybe the domain of the function isn't the whole plane. It will be a part of the plane. So the domain of the function itself is a subset of the plane. So what I'm drawing is not the graph of the function. It's just, it's just sort of the domain. The function value is not depicted on this graph. Okay, this is just, this is just, or everything here, all the points here just are just the inputs because the input itself is two coordinates. So let's say you are at this point, which is x naught y naught. Sorry, x naught y naught. Now, what, what is the partial derivative with respect to x doing? You are fixing y, so you are on this, this horizontal line. What's the, what's the equation of this line? y equals to y naught. Okay, so it's y equals y naught. And, uh, and so you're moving along this line slightly in the positive x direction. Well, actually you'd be moving both in the positive and the negative because they're two-sided derivative. I'm just, for simplicity, I'm just saying, suppose you move slightly in the positive x direction. Then how does the function value change for a small change in the x value? That's what the that's what the partial derivative is going to access. And there's actually a technical term for that. It's called a directional derivative. And what the partial derivative is saying is it's just the, the directional derivative in the x direction. And uh, so that's what this is doing. So this is doing all of these equivalent forms. And similarly, you can do, you could go vertically. What's the vertical line going to be? x equals to x naught. If you make a slight move here, that's going to give you the, the y partial derivative. Okay. So is, is, is it like a, a plane that is cutting our xy plane uh, vertically and then we're moving along? Well, yeah, there. so if you want to actually make the graph of this function, mm -hmm. you'd have to do it in three dimensions. And mm -hmm. the third dimension, the z axis, you could use the z axis to plot your function. Mm -hmm. And then for each, each such, uh, each such uh, horizontal line, you'd have a corresponding plane above that, which would be the graph of the, of the function restricted to y equals y naught. And in that, in that yz plane type of thing, the slope of the line will be the derivative. But, but that's, that's sort of a separate topic. Then that, that's how you do it. So if you actually want to, want to do the graph of the function, you have to make a third axis and plot the graph. And, and we're not doing that right now. Mm -hmm. But that's how you would do it if you needed to. Okay.